Uh, my name is Sander Potje. I'm uh, from the Netherlands. Uh, and today I'm going to share some knowledge we uh, had with our team. Uh, building high traffic websites in the Netherlands. Um, and before we start looking into what is a high traffic website, it's not really that specific, it's mainly about a high performance website. So how do you make a website with Joomla ready for a lot of traffic? So it's easy. Why actually do we want a good site performance? Suggestions? Suggestions, why? Why do we want a, a high performance website? So the clients will use it. Clients will use it, yeah. <laughs> That's one of the reasons. Uh, conversion, and conversion can be a lot of different areas. It can be money-wise, but also someone filling in the contact form. Um, a lot of research has been done on this topic, and it simply shows that each second it will take longer before your page load, people will go away and look for an older website that's offering the same service. But also for your SEO, your uh, search index, um, Google tend to hide uh, quick sites higher in a search engine results than sites that are lower. Another one is the cost aspect. Um, if you have a, a website that requires a lot of server performance and you have a lot of traffic on your website, it might end up that you have to buy a very large hosting package uh, to acknowledge all those uh, server uh, uh, capacity. So there are several aspects why you want it. Joomla is fantastic. It is a great CMS to build a high performance website. You don't have to be a lot of strange thing. Uh, you don't have to hack the core. You can stick to the core and it's ready. You just have to know how to configure it properly. So there's some great news. To build the website that has a lot of traffic, no core changes are needed or no, not at all. But before we do that, one of the important steps, and Brian mentioned this morning earlier in his keynote as well, is to make sure that Joomla and extensions are updated. Joomla changes all the time, it's improving. It makes Joomla faster. So when you update Joomla, it can happen that your speed is twice up the, 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 as it was before. Sometimes it slows down because of new features, but in, in general, it's getting better and better all the time. And the same applies to extensions. Clean up, this is a very important one. Remove the extension that you're not using on your website. I see it so often that you have a, a website with a lot of extensions and you're checking why you're actually using this and then you find out they're not even using it but still loading in the background. And specifically, have a look at the system plugins. Those are plugins that are often rendered on each page load on the website. And if they perform certain database queries, for example, or load specific data, they slow down your website. It's also important to not install uh, similar extensions for the same functionality. If you want a form uh, or a guestbook, don't install two guestbook extensions, contact form as well. Uh, sometimes you see like two different extensions for just a contact form, not needed at all. It's also important and I'm Pretty sure not all of us are doing that right now is to select your extension you would want to use on the website based on the performance. So not just look at the functionality, also check how it performs. Is it quick, does it slow down the website? Um, and make your selection uh, with the performance in mind. This is a pre pretty easy one, but I see that still uh, at mainly migrated old website where they haven't touched it at all. Uh, where the database type is MySQL I, and the I is for uh, improved. Uh, nowadays in PHP 7, it's not even uh, supported the MySQL old version anymore. So make sure it's set to MySQL I, because that improves it a lot. Another one is GZIP page compression. Um, this can be set in the global configuration of Joomla. Do you all set that on? No? Why not? Sorry? It's already set on the server. Okay, that's a good reason. <laughs> but in general, um, you can turn this on and it will improve your performance. There's one warning on that and it sometimes causes issues when you share your links on Facebook and Twitter, for example. It can't uh, read out properly anymore the meta information 
to display the image and title and so on. But as usual, there's a fix for that, and it's called gzip control. It's a plugin in the Joomla extension directory, which you can install, and then you can have gzip enabled while it's still able to share the links on the social media. Another big one is images. Uh, those are often the, the, the biggest part of a web loading. Uh, and those can be uh, easily optimized without any risk. Often. In this example, this is a website where uh, about 75% of the website is images. So it's a big part. So select your images um, and, and make a decision. Do you really need that slider with 12 images on the homepage? While research also shows that people are not using sliders at all. They don't look at image two, three, four, five, six. So keep that in mind and optimize every image you have on your website. And there are a lot of tools for that. Online, also Joomla extensions, but for, for example, tinyPNG, uh, Kraken.io, image recycle, compressor.io, those are all great tools where you simply upload an image and you can download an optimized one without seeing any difference in the image. Template. Another big one. Who's using template clip templates? One, two? Not that much. S certainly in the past, those template clips uh, are great because they have a lot of functionality where you can select your team, your color, and it's flexible for many of us. So one template is suitable for thousands of people. But the downside of this is that that template includes all the CSS, JavaScript, or whatever it's loaded not just for your website, but for all those thousands of websites. So when you have a simple website with a template clip template, it can result that you only use a really small part of all the CSS and JavaScript in the template. Nowadays, most of them have their own compression tool, but still not really fixing the issue because it only compresses things and it's still loaded. So better is to build your own custom template. In that way, you have full control about what's loading on your website. Uh, you have full control about what's rendered on the front end. And you can also, if you want, uh, reduce the JavaScript and CSS requested on the page. So for example, we're working also always with uh, our own basic template. And we're loading all the Joomla framework, JavaScript, jQuery files, etc., and then starting to inset them one by one. So, uh, when we have our base template like this, it's not rendering or loading any CSS or JavaScript file at all, even the core ones not. And from there on, we're going to start adding what we really need on that website. And if possible, we try not even to load jQuery or own JavaScript. Um, it oft, uh, you see sometimes that people are loading an entire jQuery library or even three of them because of plugins for just a simple slider. There are great, simple, clean JavaScript, uh, um, JavaScript files that you can include to have the slider functionality. So it's not needed to have an entire jQuery library for that. Then still, a lot of extensions are loading their own CSS, JavaScript, uh, when you're using them on the website. Um, that results in a lot of requests. Nowadays, it's getting less and less important because HTTP2, where you can load similar connections on the same time rather than waiting before each file has loaded. But still, it's important to have a look at it. So you can use extensions like uh, JCH Optimize and Script Merge or Rock Booster to compress those JavaScript and CSS files. But only use one of those extensions on the site. And then still, is it really needed? The first step is to see if you can get rid of all those files even before optimizing and compressing it. We are not using any of those optimizing, uh, optimization extensions because we try to get rid of any JavaScript or CSS that's loaded by the extension. Sometimes easier, sometimes not. Sometimes an extension has an option where you can simply set, I don't want your CSS or JavaScript loading, I will add it myself. Other, uh, other times it's hard coded in extensions, so you need to find the overwrite or using a system plugin or whatever to get rid of that CSS of your, or JavaScript. Um, but those extensions are not a real fix. So please have a look at your own extension self over the output of your website and start cleaning up that first before using any of those extensions because you will see that you're not longer, no longer needed. So when you then have your website 
basically kind of optimized, so you cleaned up the output as much as possible. What's next? I mean, the website is running, that's great, um, but when it hits, uh, has a lot of visitors, it can still require a lot of server performance. And it might be a bit uh, too much because uh, when you visit the home page and you're going to visit the home page, you both see the same content. So is it really needed for the server to render that page for you specifically and then for you and for you for you? And especially when a thousand people are going to the home page at the same time, the server has a lot of work to do to get all those pages rendered. So there's a solution for that, and that's caching. And we're first going to look at the Joomla caching itself. So what is caching, actually? A visitor goes to the server. This is what normally happens. So when you go to the homepage of a website, the server has to do some calculations to get back to you in your browser what you requested. When you have a cached website, the visitor makes that request, but then in the middle there's the intermediary, which is checking if that request has been made before. So if someone else made exactly the same request earlier, they will use the output of what the server rendered before directly to serve it back. So in that way, a lot of requests not even ending up on the server to make some high uh, calculations on it. And there are several caching types. We have server-side caching, where caching ha happens on the server itself, and client-side. And client-side means basically in a browser. Uh, I think we all experience that when we're working on a website, we update it or CSS, we refresh the page, it's not showing the updates. That's basically client-side caching in your browser. So uh, once a JavaScript is loaded, the browser will cache it and not request it from the server again. But when we look at the server-side caching in Joomla, we have several options. We have uh, the conservative caching and progressive caching. Do we all know what that means? No, no? Who, who is using the conservative ca caching on their websites? One, two? Who is using the progressive? One, two? Who is using no Joomla cache at all? So, the conservative caching. Um, can you explain why you're using that one? I thought, uh, who was using the conservative? Why are you using that one? Why not? Why not? <laughs> Great. And the progressive? No one. No one. <laughs> so, let me explain. The difference is basically, uh, on the left you see the conservative and on the right the progressive. What the caching does is it caches parts of the output of a page. So, for example, I highlighted the modules on this page. Uh, so we have an image, uh, the recent post on the right, and those are all modules. To render those five recent posts, it usually requires a database lookup. When you have caching enabled, it will cache the output of that database lookup, basically, and serve that again. So no longer a database lookup is needed. With progressive, the same happens. But it's not only caching the output of those modules, but also the combination of the modules on that page. So rather than having all those modules individually cached, you have one cache for the entire combination of elements on the web page. And the same happens with the output of the content in the main area. So that's the big difference between those areas. Um, there's not really uh, the best way or the, the best option in Joomla to cache. Uh, the best option is probably another one. Um, because before going to that one, um, you can exclude modules from that caching. So you can have dynamic modules rather than having them cached in the settings. But for me, the best option in Joomla is the Joomla page cache. Who's using that one? Nobody. Did you know there is another caching option in Joomla? Yeah, some. When you go to the system plugins, there's a plugin called Page Cache. And when you enable that plugin, it makes a, an, a snapshot of the output of a specific URL and stores that on the server for you. That plugin is disabled by default, but when you enable it, it will uh, cache the entire page. But then there's still another option, because this is all within Joomla. You can also look at other caching techniques like HTTP proxy caching. And what is that exactly? Um, examples of them are varnish or CDN somehow. 
Who's using varnish? Who's using CDNs? A lot of them. Do you always need to use a CDN? No. Yes? Yes? No? Why yes? So to reduce uh, the, the, the transmission between the server and the client. And why no? Yeah, so if you only have a few visitors, why paying for a CDN service? Uh, um, in general, uh, Brian's answer is correct because uh, quite often CDN think of like it's only needed if you have a website that is uh, visited by the entire world because CDNs are often located across the world so people get served with the nearest server location. But that's not the only reason. You simply reduce the, uh, the traffic to your own server uh, by enabling a CDN. And the same is, uh, applies to Varnish. And how does that work exactly? Uh, without Varnish, uh, a, a visitor on your website goes directly to the server, the same like the Joomla caching. With Varnish enabled, there's a server in between, and it simply checks if you go to the home page of a website, has that page been requested, yes or no? And if yes, if it has been requested before, it will simply serve the entire page from the Varnish cache. So it's not even hitting the web server, so the web server has nothing to do at that moment. If it's not uh, requested before, the request will go to the web server, serve it back to the Varnish cache, and serve it back to the client. The next one doing the same request will get the, the cache version. You can also make sure that nobody ends up on a web server to make, uh, by uh, putting all the pages you have directly on Varnish. So when you edit something, you just make sure that they are directly cached uh, on the Varnish server. So nobody, no one as first time has to wait for a longer time before the page is being served. Varnish is really, really quick. I mean, I saw a, people, a couple of people using it. How are your experience with it? Good? Great, yeah, yeah. Um, in the Netherlands, there's a web host called Byte. Um, they created a website, Varnish Speed Test. And what they're actually doing is uh, making a test of your website by putting a couple pages on their Varnish server, so a, a static snapshot, and then comparing it. Uh, if we do the Joomla.org website in this uh, check, we'll see that it's uh, over 230% quicker with Varnish than without. And um, it saves a lot of server requests, but it makes it so much quicker on a website. So can I use it? It really depends on your web host, on your server setup, if it's available. Not all shared hosting companies have something like a Varnish cache available. You can check it with your web host. Uh, it's uh, certainly with, with cluster techniques, it's not easy for a web host to set it up. But it happens. That's the same what the Dutch provider is doing. Uh, SiteGround has something called SuperCache, which is pretty similar to Varnish Cache. It's also uh, caching the entire pages on the uh, server. Um, but when we have those static HTML pages cached, we have a couple of things we have to uh, keep in mind. When you usually have a website where you have like an image slideshow which is changing each page load, that won't happen anymore because the initial one is cached, so the next one will see the uh, same image. Is that bad? Maybe not. Um, if you use device detection, like if somebody is using a mobile phone or a, a desktop to visit the website, and you do the detection on the server, so which PHP, it won't uh, help anymore because when somebody visits on the mobile the website, a specific URL, that URL is also served for the next one going via the desktop. So you can only do the detection via JavaScript uh, on the client itself. Yeah, in Joomla. Yeah, so, so in Joomla there is now a parameter where you can set if uh, there should be device uh, specific caching. If you're using Varnish, mm -hmm. you can do the detection in Varnish, a mobile detection in Varnish, and then Varnish. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, so there are techniques for sure to uh, change that, but then still it's the question do I really need to have that detection or can I get rid of it 
or can I create a mobile first website, which is also suitable for desktop, which is better anyway. So you can create workarounds for sure, but uh, it might not even be needed. Um, a very important aspect is that you need to prevent user data being end up in a cache. So for example, when you have a, a website with varnish and somebody fills in a contact form, you don't want, if somebody submitted it and there's an error, that the next person on a different computer goes to that contact form, see the filled in information of that user. Or uh, if you're shopping on a website, you suddenly end up in a different shopping cart with things you haven't ordered yet. So that's something you really have to uh, keep in mind that you don't see each other's uh, data. You can exclude pages from caching for sure. And you have to be careful in it. And you don't want to end up with only the homepage being cached because then you probably have to set it up differently. But quite often you can make sure that specific uh, pages are excluded. A good example is that the entire administrator folder of your Joomla website, you don't want to get that cached with Varnish. So you exclude the entire administrator directory. It's also uh, like any caching technique that you're using and your, specifically your end user of the website, I just changed an article title, but I don't see it on the website, what happened? And that's still cached. So you have to keep in mind a way to make sure that user changes are being visible, if possible, directly. So um, for Byte, we developed a plugin for Joomla. Um, that uh, helps you, and I, I haven't actually tested it because I don't know any other shared host using Varnish as well, but um, I think it should work on any uh, Varnish setup, uh, or at least with some small modifications. Uh, but in that way, you can set how long a page is being cached, cached with Varnish, and you can exclude menu items and components in total for being cached. If you have like a forum, and they are not having like the proper setup uh, that you can cache parts of it, you might want to include the entire forum component to prevent ending up in the cache. It's also in a Joomla extension directly, plus the varnish for Joomla. This plugin also helps uh, content editors. So as soon as a page is edited, this plugin checks, okay, on what URLs on my website this article is being displayed. So it's probably uh, on the home page, it's probably on the blog page, and the detail view. So it's checking all those URLs and automatically renew those pages in a varnish case. So there's no delay between editing an article and seeing the changes on the website, which your end users will love, because otherwise you will get a call for sure if they make a big mistake, uh, a typo in their title that they want to get rid of and don't want to wait like six hours for it. But what if you do want a dynamic website? It's all cache, so how can I have some dynamic elements? How can I have that slider that is changing? How can I have uh, a shopping cart? Um, for that, there are several solutions. And um, uh, one of our clients in the Netherlands is uh, the NPO. It's like the BBC uh, over here. And we've created all the radio station uh, websites. And they're all running on Joomla nowadays. And if you're in connection with radio website, and especially the Radio 1, that's like the BBC one, when there's some big news, a lot of traffic goes directly to the website. And um, in general, all those websites have like over a million page views a month, uh, and it can be even completely go weird. This is like uh, more for, for the young people, and when they put a, a kind of story up on Facebook, it can completely go viral. Uh, so it ha has a lot of visitors in a short time. Those websites are all running on Joomla. No changes, no core hacks. The only thing that's been set up properly is the caching. And it's not exactly varnish in this case, but really much similar to it. So the pages are all statically served from a server. So really uh, static HTML pages. So um, when we have like the, the MPO Radio 1 website, and I'm going to click to that one. This is a static HTML page. But what happens uh, if somebody uh, wants to add uh, something to their playlist and listen back to it. This is all dynamic information and specifically for this user. And uh, when they go to another page, it still keeps playing and the title of what you're listening oh, is on top. But if now somebody else goes to the website, they see their own playlist again. 
So this is being set up in a way that the whole pages, the HTML of it is rendered statically, but the data is loaded dynamically. So how does that look like, code base? For example, it's going with an AJAX request. It's uh, going to the server and it's checking the suggestions of the playlist. What uh, audio fragments do you want to listen? And those re uh, that response of that request is uh, being made to a specific URL on top. And then when it's get back, it's being served in a JSON output. And a JSON output is used in a JavaScript to put the elements on the right place in a web page. So when we have example, there's this HTML placeholder for an audio fragment that's being replaced dynamically with the data from the JSON output. The nice thing is that the, J, the, the AJAX request for a specific playlist is also cached. So if, no, if a visitor on a website doesn't add any new item to the playlist, it's getting a cached version of the request again back. So we try to reduce the load as much as possible. And for the server, they love this type of output because it's simply text. It's, it's just a little bit uh, and it's going really quickly. So whew, where I'm going to start with my own website to make that dynamic because it looks all complicated. In Joomla, we have a nice start point. It's called com Ajax. And maybe you have seen that component somewhere in your server folders and wondering what it's doing. Who has been using com Ajax in the past? Okay. so. Some know what it is. Uh, it's an AJAX interface that you can use to get dynamic data on a web page, out of your database, for example, without loading an entire page. And a nice simple example is from Niels van der Veer, is a, a, a young student in the Netherlands, and he created mod J versions. And what is that module doing? That's checking all the time what is the latest Joomla version available and displays that on a placeholder on a web page. So, code base is checking some set, uh, uh, settings from the uh, module, and then it's doing the request, and in the end, when they get the response back, which is get from uh, the request, they replace with uh, HTML element with latest version, the new div containing the actual version number of it. So in that way, you can make a small part dynamic. And this really is a simple, small example but you can imagine that you can do that with basically anything on the web page. A shopping cart, rather than having that rendered with PHP, the page is loaded, and once it's loaded, it's doing a request to get my shopping cart items. And then it's replacing a specific area on your website with the shopping data. Um, within the module, there's a helper.php with a function get Ajax, and thanks to the com Ajax, it's ending up directly over here. And this is doing basically the magic. It's checking up with the helper function to get the latest uh, version uh, from the server. So you can still use PHP to get the data, but it's being called with Ajax. So um, high traffic websites. It's also important that the websites are stable, of course, because if you want to deploy an update, you don't want the website being down because of a mistake. And what happens if a Joomla update went wrong? So a bit insights on how we implemented that for, our, for these uh, websites. We're using Git and Git Flow. Who's using Git and Git Flow? Git Flow is a, a branching model. And it basically means that you have like a master and development branch. And once you start making a, a new feature, uh, on a website, you need a branch from there. And that model helps to make sure that it's streamlined and the master branch is always having a stable version of the website. So before something is being added on the master, it's first on the development branch and then it will go to the release branch where it can be checked and tested before the release, make some final adjustments and when it's all fine, it will be released to the master. So may, uh, a master branch on this uh, setup is always a stable version. Um, we do have our own Git uh, repository where we have our own Joomla installed on there. 
It basically has the settings already, what we're using. It has a very basic template we're, use, uh, we're making for each uh, website, all custom templates. So that's all in our uh, Git repository. And we used it to clone for each new project so we have the same start for all. And we maintain it and improve it and each thing we learn in a project, we contribute it back to our main repo repository so the next start of the project is even better or easier. We're also using uh, DTAP, and that stands for Development, Testing, Acceptance, and Production. So that's a kind of street um, where the entire Joomla website is in Git when we compare that to both. Is that the production website, what the visitor uh, will see, is the Git master branch, basically. The acceptance is also Git master branch, and that's being exactly the same server setup, but where the client of your website can test it uh, if everything is working uh, correctly before it's being released to the production server. A testing area is where new features can be tested with the client. And then we have the development, and that's often the local development of the developers where they're working. The great thing of having an entire website, and we're, we're putting our entire Joomla installation, so not the custom development, but the entire installation in Git, is that we can really easily uh, release those to other areas and other uh, stages of the whole D, uh, DTAP stream. Um, the only thing that's always uh, a trouble is the database changes. Uh, because database changes are hard to track. Or at least you can uh, roll out the files from an acceptance to the production, but when you roll out this database from acceptance to production, it might end up that all your recent articles being published or whatever data is being lost. So often that's not possible. But you do want to have the database structure you changed during new features applied to the master. So while there's still, not, and there's still some discussion and we're still looking at the best solution, so if you have any suggestions, more than welcome, but there's not like a Git system for databases. It's simply too hard to have that tracked in a proper way. So for us, practically, we're also using, uh, while we're working on features, we are all working with issues, so they all have an issue number. And we simply put, like Joomla is doing with updates, an SQL query or file with queries in there for updates, we're doing that for each issue. So as, as, as soon as we release something on production, we know exactly which ver, uh, issues are being released and which database queries, if needed, need to be formed on live site as well to make it up and running with the real-time live, live data. Another thing, who has ever heard of the term performance budget? Two, three, great. Um, that's not a money, so don't be afraid. Yeah, it requires some time of your client probably, but it's not directly a money budget. It's mainly about the, uh, how much kilobytes you're loading on your website. And it's, it's, it's a goal for you and your client to work on. And we, we start to use it more and more often because it's a helpful in many ways. You can create a, a high performance website with it with as less kilobytes as possible. And what is a good budget? It really depends. If you uh, have a lot of uh, people visiting uh, on a mobile phone with a 2G connection, you want to have even less uh, kilobytes than when you have like uh, only people visiting via desktop. I don't think that's still possible nowadays, but it, it makes a difference. Um, a good practice is to check uh, another uh, website in the same industry and say, okay, I want to at least, uh, have at least a 20% faster website than the other one to make sure you rank better. And then you have uh, a certain amount of uh, kilobytes. And that might be helpful because, you know, all the clients are usually, I want this on the homepage and this is important for me on the homepage and this is important on the homepage. They basically all, all the time want everything on the homepage. But with this uh, having uh, behind, it helps to make them decisions. If you want to have this on your page, it requires that, uh, this amount of kilobytes, you might need to remove something else. So what's the most important for you? Is it A or B? And help them make them choose. A great tool to test how you're performing is Jello Labs. Who's using Jello, uh, Jello Labs? Ever heard about it? It's like a GT metrics, but then even more advanced. 
GT metrics known by you? Yeah, more. You can enter a URL and it's checking on many areas. So the page weight, the request, how many are being made, uh, the complexity of the output of your website, uh, how many, uh, many places are being uh, placed, uh, scroll bottlenecks, so it's also analyzing your CSS JavaScript on many areas. And also checks uh, if all CSS you're loading is actually used or is it having mistakes, etc. So it makes even more than this displayed over here, checks on your website and analyze it based on performance. Because GT metrics or any analyzing tool is not the, the holy grail, it helps you to detect issues on a website that needs to be performed. Great tool, put your site on it and I, I guess you will find something to improve. So um, to end up uh, the presentation, I want to give you a, 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 a slightly closer look at the sites we're working on for the, for the Dutch public radio stations. A bit explanation. All those sites are, are based on a, ki a kind of three aspects. We're using the Joomla article manager as much as possible. We made some improvements, I will show that on that. Uh, we're using a component called Radio Box that's pulling all the data via an API to the website about what DJs are on the radio, what tracks they are uh, playing, who was in the show for an interview. That's all in a central database that we're pulling to the website. So a lot of the pages are not even touched by uh, a content editor on the website itself, but uh, entering the website via API. Besides that, we use uh, all the time a, a front-end component. When, uh, and that component is a very simple component that pulling the data that we specifically need on a page rather than extending, overriding, combining a lot of components. So it's making small requests optimized to the database to get only the, the data that is needed on that page and nothing more. Um, uh, So this is the uh, Radio 1 website backend. It's, it's kind of default Joomla. The content editor is certainly not seeing all of this. They only have access to the areas needed in the website. But for this website, we, uh, for example, uh, improved the article view. view. Um, we all know the, those search tools, but they're working with several sections of articles. So a very simple change is to add the plugin that's adding short links, that's basically adding default filters for the article view, so they can quickly see what they need. Another thing is that um, for, for, for a radio station with, based on news, they plan a lot of articles in advance. Um, and in Joomla, you see a whole list of articles, uh, but, and you can filter them on a bit of the dates, etc. but it's hard to have a clear overview and also if it needs to be checked. So one of the things we created recently is a planning component, which is pulling the data from the article component and simply render it in a way where it's grouped by date. And for the editors, they can easily see if an article is already ready for publication or not, or uh, if it's published. So this week is already uh, almost gone, but for next week, there are not that much articles planned. And they can also easily uh, add a note uh, for a specific date, like this is a special So they know that certain articles will be published on that date uh, because it's a national holiday or uh, Max Verstappen is running a Formula One race or whatever, things like that. So that's one of the changes we make that for them to make it easier to work with the article workflow. It's a very simple component and mainly reusing the data that's already in Joomla. Another area is uh, for one of the other radio stations, and that's this website. We made some uh, changes for, uh, for the uh, editing articles. 
So um, let me see which one. I'll make it slightly bigger, I guess. So this is mainly an extending of some data around it. And what they can do with articles is they can select the related program on the website. And this is data that's coming from the radio box connection. So by selecting the, the correct program, we will make sure that on the program page of the website, those news articles are displayed automatically. So a content user doesn't have to do anything for it. They can select uh, related articles uh, themselves. And if they want to add uh, a tweet uh, or uh, an Instagram post to the account, we made an interface where uh, they can add like a URL of a tweet. Uh, I think I... The full screen modus is killing me. So. So at the place where they want uh, to add the tweet, so. they add the link to it, and it's being added uh, in a URL, and they can basically add whatever they see on the page they want to include on the website. And that applies for many areas, like Instagram, uh, a live blog item they are using, Spotify, and things like that. If they now um, check on the website, the article, it's being included and dynamically rendered. That helps also to make sure that's all matching the requirements around the cookie wall, for example. Because if editors are going to use the embed post, it will end up completely crazy. We have to make sure that it's all matching the requirements around that. Another area is that they often want uh, the URL of the, and, uh, the final article that's being published, even before it's being published. And we display that on top of it, and they can easily copy and paste that and make sure they can prepare their social media uh, posts already with the correct URL as we will be using. You also see that the pages that I just saved this article is also checking on which pages this article is visible. This is what I showed before with the similar varnish setup where those pages are being uh, checked and renewed directly. Another aspect of the, this website is when you want a website like this, uh, where all images are having the same size, and I explained before as well that uh, images are killing the performance of your website, especially when you have a lot of content editors that don't have Photoshop skills at all and simply connect their uh, camera and upload their uh, 10 megabyte uh, photo on your page, it will kill your homepage directly. So you don't want that performance-wise. So for that, we created a, a new tool and it completely hooks in with uh, the Joomla um, image uh, system. And they can select the, the image from uh, their computer. And we set automatically the aspect ratio of this image. And that depends on each field. And the editor can simply select, okay, I want this area of the page. And then insert it on the page and it's being stored directly on a specific location, and it's also being optimized in the background. So even when they use like a 10,000 pixel wide image, it will reduce to the maximum size that's really needed on this website. Um, they also want to improve the SEO performance of the website. So we created a tool where you can add the keyword or key phrase, and it's automatically checking on many areas in your article if uh, they write the content correctly for it. So in this case, it's Nas, uh, that's the artist. And it's checking on many uh, areas if you're matching the uh, criteria. And in this example, your meta description is slightly too long. The recommendation is between 100 and 150 characters. So they can change it uh, in the description to match that criteria. Um, and they do also do see a preview of the Google search result and add the data for social sharing, like Facebook, Twitter, and things like that. So checking on several aspects if you optimize your content for the SEO. Um,
so those are a, a couple, I'm not sure, let's see how much time. I think I'm almost running over time. Is there any specific you would like to know about this website? I have the website over here. Ask me and let's have like two questions and I will show you how we did that. Uh, are you using open embed for the Open embed for the tweets? You mean for, for uh, the, the Twitter uh, embed code in a page? Yeah. That's this. Yeah. Yeah, if you enter this, it will be used in the open embed in the code. Or you mean the protocol open embed? For the Yes, so it will generate all the meta tags in the, in the source that are needed to be used for the Twitter and things like that, in that way. Oh, okay. <laughs> Any other one? Okay, so um, we, we have been uh, working a lot on this extension and uh, you have seen uh, a couple of them and we're going to release them as well as public extensions. They have been used uh, for our clients several, uh, on several websites uh, now and we keep improving them uh, based on the feedback we got. And we just launched extension.perfectwebteam.com and we will release in the upcoming weeks four new extensions. The first one is uh, the, the PWT SEO one, which you just saw uh, and that's an early version so we're working on uh, an even further improved one for improving the SEO. The image for the whole image handling, and to give a very sneak preview about the latest status about that, it will be um, like this. So you select your image, uh, can crop it, edit it. When you uploaded it, you can also select an image that's already on your server. You can also include a gallery easily, like selecting multiple images for on your page, and of course, some documentation around it. Uh, we also created a very simple basic sitemap uh, and that sitemap is fully integrated with Joomla as well. So when you go to an article or a menu item, it has have showing two new options where you can select if it's need to be added to the XML sitemap or the HTML and if you having a category view, you can also set if you want to include the articles of that category or not. And the final one is uh, that my ACO manager extensions, some of you uh, will know that, will also be part of it and will be PWT ACL. So these extensions and all new versions will be uh, released in the upcoming months during this summer. If you want to have early access to it on the website, you can uh, sign up, you leave your email uh, and name and you will get a notification as soon as we uh, have the early access version available that you can start using them. So thank you for now.